Lemon Amoeba Presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Hey there, once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Super Monaco GP, developed by Probe Software, published by US Gold, and released in time for the spring of 1991. Super Monaco GP is a conversion of the 1989 Sig coin op. You can see little Alain Prost, four times world champion, has made it to the track mode and that is very similar to the arcade machine and it's great to see an arcade like track mode in this game unfortunately you can ignore the map because we will not be racing on the practice course and we cannot compare this to the real track because look where they've placed the tunnel basically on the start finish line so well we cannot compare track for track as we shall see but i really do appreciate this great introduction this great music as well see a few stats on the high score table when the first five positions are presented and of course they will not be saved to disc unfortunately but hopefully you can see the great presentation the great atmosphere and the great polish of this game and by pressing that fire button that takes us on to the options screen and just like super hang on from the options we can change between mouse and joystick control by pressing the c key and by pressing the S key, we can change the joystick sensitivity from low, medium and high. We can also choose automatic or manual gearbox. So let's just choose the beginner level for this and let's check this game out. The aim of Super Monaco GP is to compete on four tracks, four world circuits, the last of which is Monaco itself. And before we get there, what we have to do is qualify on the other three. And before we can even qualify on the first one, which is France, the pole record circuit, hopefully in France, which bears absolutely no resemblance whatsoever to the actual circuit. Well, first we have to qualify on that track, and then that will denote our position for a race. And at this stage, all we have to do is to keep that thing pointed in a straight line and not collide with anything. Once we do that, we'll get to the end of the line and we'll receive a time for that, which will denote the position that we start from in the race. And we have to qualify in the top eight to get through into the race itself. And we've qualified seventh, so we've just about made it. To begin, this game starts off pretty difficult and if you touch one of these corners then that will lose a place and if you touch that hard enough you will actually crash out. So if you touch a corner you will lose a place and if you don't then you can overtake one driver. But just one crash will not only write off the entire race but everything else along with it. Back we go to the options screen and let's press fire and let's try that all over again. And yes, we'll still have to go through these options and we'll still have to qualify even though we crashed out on virtually the third corner. So let's see if we can qualify in a higher position this time. And you can see already the graphics are great. The clouds in the sky with a very nice faded effect and nice green hills and the background green background reminiscent of the arcade with a city landscape which probably looks nothing like France 
Butler, you can see stock trees and the old chevrons return and a nice pile of tires which we can't actually bounce off so we can see all we have to do is to slow down for all of these corners preempt all these bends and if we can break before a bend and accelerate through it which like that is the best policy rule number one is don't touch anything and if you follow that rule hopefully it will get a good position and although it said fourth on the indicator as we went under the line we actually got fifth because another opponent beat us by fractions per second At random just like f1 gp will be introduced to wet races and of course that will mean that our car grips the road even less than it did before but we don't have any rain effects in this game unfortunately and we don't even have any layers of parallax scrolling in the background you can see some of the green hills have been retained but some of those hills are actually now blue and turquoise and turquoise and blue hills in the background isn't an amazing thing for a racing game neither is that poor gradient effect which is taken over from the excellent blue gradient effect in the sky but blue hills and dodgy sky apart we have a very fast frame rate and even though this frame ripper isn't as smooth as the Amiga's native 50 it's still smooth enough maybe not as smooth as the arcade version and certainly not as jam-packed with features but there we go, that's the first lap completed and we are up to 7th position you can see there is a limit in this race and there will be a limit to every race in this case we must qualify well it was 12th and now it's 10th that will continue to drop as we continue and as long as we qualify maybe 5th we can guarantee ourselves progress onto the next track but if we don't qualify in those higher positions of course we jeopardise the whole lot As you can see the computer control players will stick to the racing line like glue and they are not intelligent in the slightest. All they will do is continue at high speed and continue there off into the distance and leave us struggling to catch up. Those computer control players can travel straight through our car if they overtake us from the rear and as you've seen that's not very accurate to an F1 race. But apart from the cars travelling straight through our vehicle and the apparent dumbness of those vehicles that's not too bad at least they don't weave around the track like super hang on and let's face it lotus but you can see trying to take it easy there we are losing the eighth position and it requires us to gain eighth apparently or will not qualify and even though we are in eighth at the moment and you would think that eighth would give us the chance to continue on to the next track well unfortunately not so as we approach the line we have not qualified and that means that we have to start the whole thing once again all over again let's continue for the third and the final time and let's see if we can't crack this first course it is very difficult for beginners and you can see that we are playing this still on the beginner level so it really does not take it easy on the player and certain amounts of practice will be required and taking the inside of these corners means that we have a nice steady drive through the rest and on this first course it is possible if you lean that car all the way over into those corners we can simply release forward because it is forward to accelerate in this game we can simply release forward and that will give us hopefully enough speed loss to get around those difficult sections there isn't much braking which has to be done if you follow that traditional advice and even though the brakes aren't amazing to say the least in this game that actually gives us pole position hopefully now that gives us a good chance in the race itself so let's speed on through and you can see from pole position it's still not easy to retain that because the second, third, maybe even the fourth driver will overtake before we've even got started. The acceleration in this game is very poor indeed, and it accelerates very slowly, which again is unlike a real F1 car. But if we take a look at those screenshots, you can see the arcade version, 
is amazing, very fast, very smooth, very playable, very fun. And the Sega Genesis version, well, the Sega Mega Drive would be one of the best conversions of this game, since this was a Sega game, and you can also see a conversion there for the Commodore 64, which isn't amazing, but it's again a valiant effort. Moving on back to the Amiga, you can see I'm now on the second lap, and we are in position 5, which is terrific. So, tentatively moving around all these sharp corners, just to make sure that we don't collide with anything. But the most important thing is to stick to that racing line, and if an opponent is on that racing line at the same time as we are, then we'll have to bump the back of that, and then that will spin off into the distance, and we'll have to catch up. The main problem about this game is that on the final lap, and perhaps even on the second lap, the opponents tend to disappear, and we spend a lot of time either trying to stay ahead of an opponent, you can see in our rearview mirror, or trying to catch up to an opponent somewhere in front. By the time the player gets to the third lap, it is also not hard to maintain our position, whatever that may be. So if we are in second, then we'll probably stay second going over the line, and as we are fifth at the moment, we'll probably retain that fifth. And as you can see, we need to gain fifth to qualify, and hopefully it will give us that position and usually if we are in the top five it will give us that qualification automatically and i really do appreciate the gold trophy it almost looks digitized there although the man and the presentation of the qualification screen is a little poor. That digitized gold trophy really does make up for something. And now that we've qualified through France, let's venture on to Brazil. And again, this is nothing like any of the Brazilian circuits. And this is quite a tricky course. In fact, it's probably the hardest course in the game. And so again, all the player must do is to memorize this course. As soon as they see the blue chevrons, get to that side of the road as quickly as possible. Ease off the gas. If you can brake before a bend, that's great. But sometimes you just need to ease off. And hopefully easing off will mean that we can get through most of these corners intact. And hopefully that will mean a great position of the line. In this case, we have gained 7th, and we can usually anticipate one extra place above the one that it says that we are entitled to as we drive under the line. Now all we need to do is to put all that to good practice drive around and compete in the race itself and once again the Brazil race we must qualify at least in the top five maybe top six maybe you can get away with seven but as we've seen I've qualified in seventh and sometimes it doesn't allow it so the hardest part again is the start when all the players are bunched up together and this virtually dictates the place that we can drive in the race because the players will jet off and unless we make zero mistakes whatsoever, then we don't really have a chance of catching that first place position driver. No, this is not Lotus 1. We do not have an opportunity to compete and complete every single course in first position, no matter what. And even if we make mistakes. In this game, one mistake will send us to the back of the track. And if we make a major mistake, of course, we'll be off. For the main part, the other tactic is to stay to the racing line and to observe the speed of the corners even if the opponents get in our way because as you can see, as soon as we touch, that will mean that we've lost that position for an overtake and even though this is an arcade racer, the arcade overtaking in this game is actually quite fun and it can be quite exhilarating when you pull off a great manoeuvre. That's the overtake completed with one lap still to go and it's lucky that we did because 7th is the position that we are required to be in 
Unfortunately, it is recommended to be in one position higher than the position it recommends in this game, and definitely in the top five. So even if we do qualify and complete this race in seventh, unfortunately that will not be enough to move on to the next track. So while you see me completely doing that, I will just say this game was created by Probe, and Probe are famous for creating film conversions like Back to the Future 3 in 91, Alien 3 in 1992. They created great games like Golden Axe in 1990, and they used the racing engine to create something dire like Outrun in 1989, and the same engine went on to create the amazing Outrun Europa in 1991. Probe are also credited with creating Supremacy in 1990 and the absolutely appalling Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in 1991. Super Monaco GP was coded by Zara ZK Johannes and Zara Johannes created Super Hang On amazingly in 1988 which was very well received and he used the same game engine to create Power Drift for a probe in 1989 which was not very well received and then he used the exact same game engine to create the very bad Harley Davidson game in 1990. He then created Super Monaco GP in 1991 which is an upgrade and ranks somewhere near his great success with Super Hang On but maybe not quite. He then moved on to Smash TV in 1991. On the Amiga you can see we've managed to qualify second in Spain and with Spain being by far the easiest course in the entire game it's possible to gain a higher position even if you haven't played this game in quite some time like I haven't actually and this was recorded perhaps a year ago but you can see Spain being the easiest track all you have to do is to find that racing line and if you can qualify in a higher position then by the time you get this far in the game hopefully it will be easy enough to maintain that higher position having not crashed on the first lap and if we can overtake these first few drivers that means we are almost guaranteed third which almost guarantees us qualification onto the final track so let's see if we can turn that into reality and it really is a dogfight at this point being in third with players appearing there in our rear view mirror doggedly trying to overtake whilst we try to catch up to the guy in front Super Monaco GP was one of the first arcade games to feature a very fast rear view mirror and you might remember hard driving as well, I had a very smooth rear view mirror but maybe not as fast as this and reviews also appeared in Grand Prix Circuit and Test Drive 2. I couldn't find any info as to the graphics artist on this game but my suspicions are it was so Marchese and Soul worked on Super Hang On, created the graphics for Power Drift and Outrun Europa as well. And again, no idea who created the music, but Super Hang On music was created by Katsuhiro Hayashi from Sega Sound System. He worked on many funky musics and maybe he created this as well. Though the player AI isn't brilliant in this game and they will be ignorant as to our manoeuvres and again will pass straight through our car like it doesn't exist. By the time we get to this level trying to overtake that third place driver into second position is very difficult and we have had opportunities but crashing incessantly into the back of that thing means that we come home in third. Let's crawl our way back up to that top speed as we visit the final track in this game. This is Monaco with its flat sided buildings. We get silver buildings and three story brick buildings and they pass by very quickly indeed. Maybe it's not as atmospheric as Batman the movie but as long as the speed isn't compromised that isn't too bad. 
Again, because this is an arcade racer, the game will slip slide across the track and the levels of grip in this game are absolutely nothing compared to what they were in Vroom. And if I was to compare this game to anything, it would be the Vroom series and maybe the F1 World Championship Edition by DeMarc is the closest thing that I could find to Super Monaco GP on the Amiga. Unlike the real track, the Monaco track is just as wide as every other course and this is actually faster than the second course so it's actually one of the fastest in the game. There are a number of tight spots but if you preempt those this is actually a very fast course indeed. So again we are in fourth position so you would think that gives us a great chance of completing the game but in order to complete the game we must get to the podium and that means we must qualify in the top three. And look at that, as we enter the bridge, it turns to the left. And when did the road turn to the left as we travel through the tunnel? I have no idea. But apart from those inconsistencies, as an arcade racer, it's fun. And as soon as the player gets used to the fact that the car does not turn on the spot, and you have to drag that thing across the track, the brakes are pretty much useless and the other opponents are mindless drones. That's why the magazine reviewers had mixed opinions about this game and the very lowest score comes from Amiga User International who gave this game 67%, Amiga Power gave it 72%, Amiga Joker gave Super Monaco GP 75% and Powerplay gave this game 78%. Now we move on to the 80 scores, Amiga Format gave this 83%, C Omega, CMVG and Zero Magazine all give this 85%, Ace gave it 87%, The One gave it 89% and Zap actually gave Super Monaco GP on the Amiga 91%. They praised the hook ability and the last ability of these courses and this game but they definitely commented on the flat buildings and even though they really appreciated the frame rate they said it was not arcade perfect. Well, as we've seen, it is not arcade perfect, and other conversions are better on other machines. But on the Amiga, and don't forget, Jeff Cramman's Formula One Grand Prix appeared in November 91, and this game appeared in Spring 91, with games such as Vroom and Nigel Mansell's in 1992. the detail of the graphics on this Monaco course and we can even see cranes poking across the track in certain places and Monaco is definitely the best track of the four. I have respect for this game although not as much respect as Super Hang On. I definitely think the programming did a great job and certainly better than Harley Davidson. On top of that I don't quite understand why there is an engine drone droning on in the background on top of our own engine which maintains a low rev throughout the entire game and I don't quite understand why the last lap of any track is very lonely and you can see I've just taken a back marker there with absolutely no chance of catching the leader. And that's my final position, fourth having not qualified for the podium and it gives us a precious few handful of points there, 5,542 points for all that effort. That gives us second on the high score table with a very melancholy soundtrack which basically says that we failed. Thank you once again for viewing another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. Thank you.